Okay, I'd like to call on the meeting to order the town council meeting for December 4th. Uh, would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Councilor Koenig will start the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There he is. Okay, announcements. Thursday, December 18th at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room is a regular council meeting. And again on Thursday, January 8th at 7 p.m. here in the Matthew Thornton Room, regular council meeting. Comments from the <laughs> press. Oh, that's right. I gotta write this in now. Announcements, sorry, Eileen. Sometimes I don't, but <laughs> tonight I do. Uh, based on the weather forecast for this weekend, we have decided to officially postpone the holiday parade and tree lighting. The event will now be held on Sunday, December 7th. The parade will, be, will be, still begin at 3 p.m. and the tree lighting at Abbey Griffin Park will begin approximately at 3.45 p.m or where, whenever the parade gets to Abbey Griffin Park. The parade will begin, <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? Talk to them. Whenever it gets there. <laughs> thought it was amusing. All right. Uh, the <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me. <laughs> no, not at all. I didn't write this. Uh, the parade will begin at the Commons Shopping Plaza, located at 515 Daniel Webster Highway, and travels down Daniel Webster Highway to Babuzik Lake, Road and ends at Town Hall. The annual Badges versus Hard Hats Community Food Drive is underway. Drop-off donated non-perishable items at the Police Department or the Public Works Department now through January 1st. All donations are delivered to local food pantries to help families in need this holiday season. And I'd, I'd also like to um, very sincerely thank uh, the public safety officials and particularly the public works employees for the wonderful job that they did on um, the evening before Thanksgiving. Um, it was, the, the snow was incredible and heavy. Um, also like to thank the citizens of Merrimack for their hardiness, um, so many of, so many of you lost your power, and um, and I just I know it's I know it's the public safety and DPW's job to to be out there, but it makes me feel better to know that we have such fine people out there um, keeping us safe. So thank you. Here, here. Yes, thank here, you very here, much. Here. Okay, comments from the press or public. None seen. Recognitions, resignations, and retirements. Okay, acceptance of resignation of Stanley Bonislawski from the Merrimack Planning Board. Uh, we are to accept the resignation of Stanley Bonislawski from the Planning Board, where he has served as a member since June 2011. And before comments, actually, he's put a lot more time in. He has. And other, he was on the Planning Board prior to, as well as Zoning Board, and he's been involved with a lot of town. Uh, so I want to make sure that that's made public as well. Did anyone want to make move comments? Approve, well, I was going to move approval with sincere regret. Second? Second. Second. <coughs> Motion made by Councillor Boyd, second by Councillor Mahon. All of those in favor? Nancy. Oh, I was going to. Aye. I'm going to. Okay, thank you. you. And all those against? Nothing. Seven zero zero. Councillor Boyd, you wanted to make a comment? Yeah, very briefly and just kind of to dovetail off of your comments, I mean, I, along with uh, Councilor Koenig, Councilor Mayon, and probably Councilor Rothhaus, we had the privilege of serving with Stan on the planning board. Um, I don't think anybody can doubt the, the amount of time that he put in to prepare for the meetings, serving on the planning board. He was always prepared. He was always thoughtful. Um, he was a part of the process as it relates to the Merrimack premium outlets, and in, like you said, you know, budget committee, the you know zoning board, um, the you know he has certainly served the community of Merrimack with 
uh, with with distinction over the last last couple of years. And uh, he's personally known to my family, so I really want to uh, wish him and Marianne, um, his wife, the the very best. As, uh, I know they like to take cruises, and I know he's a, he's also a very voracious reader. So. Um, well, I know he'll be missing reading the, the planning board docket and the agenda. I'm sure there's a couple of books on his nightstand that he's looking forward to to dig into. So I wish I wish him nothing but the best. And Anyone? thank him for his service. Anyone else? I'll just uh, yeah, I'm here, here. <laughs> and I would uh, ditto that and also thank him from the citizens of Merrimack for his many years of service and thank you very much. Okay, next, appointments. Merrimack Public Library roof project update. An update on the roof restoration project from the Library Board of Trustees and Library Director. Jennifer, right? Yes. Good evening. Jobin, is it Jobin or Jobin? Jobin. Jobin, okay. I'll start with a couple of introductions. So if you haven't met me, um, I'm Jennifer Jobin. I'm the current chair of the Library Board of Trustees. Um, I think all of you know Yvette Kauser, our uh, library director. Um, we also have a couple of our uh, newest trustees here, Karen Freed and Matthew Publicover. Uh, so you can put a face to the names. Um, so we wanted to come here tonight just to give you an update as the roof project uh, starts to wrap up. Um, as you know, last year uh, in our um, budget, we had asked for $17,000 um, to supplement what we had in capital reserve funds to move forward with um, what was estimated to be $53,000 to restore um, the roof. Um, when it went out to bid, um, the, uh, the bids were actually quite a bit higher um, than the original estimate. Um, Paul McCallie was a big help. Um, thank you, Paul, for uh, working through the process with us. Um, and Paul and, one of the, and the contractor came to our meeting and um, and went over the different options with us since it was going to be uh, more costly. Um, so basically it came down to three options. Uh, we could go forward with the project as proposed um, and the cost would roughly be $85,000. Um, this included two coats of a protective coating um, and a 15-year warranty. Um, a second option would be to go forward with the project um, with only a single coat and opt to do a second coat at a later date. I believe he said we would have to do that within two years um, of the first coat. And that warranty would be 10 years or less. Um, third option would be to put off the project altogether. Um, so we met, we talked it over. Um, trustees agreed that um, we couldn't delay the project for a couple of reasons. One was the leakage was increasing, threatening to damage uh, materials and equipment. Um, second, um, as we learned through the process, flat roof projects um, are escalating in price rapidly. Um, there's not a lot of people who do this work, and um, so there's, and there's a lot of demand at this time. Um, so we asked questions about breaking up the project. Could we do some of it now, some of it later? Um, the majority of the work had to be done all at once, um, and the only delay we could do is in that second coating. Uh, eventually, we ruled out that option again because of the escalating cost factor if we brought um, them back there's cost in having them reset up everything at a later date um, and the fact that it would just be more costly later on uh, we would have to pay several thousand dollars more on top of what we're already paying um, so we agreed to move forward with the whole project this fall <coughs> you know we had to figure out how to pay for that extra thirty two thousand dollars uh, so we analyzed the trustee funds to find out how we could do this. Um, there were trustee savings accounts set up for fines money, the money that comes in through um, patron fines. Uh, periodically, money is moved over from our checking account to uh, fine savings, so it gets a little bit of interest. Um, and there are stipulations on how that fines money can be spent, but it can be spent on building repairs. So. We've closed out one of those uh, savings accounts, and that will be what we're using to pay for that extra um, on the roof. Um, when work began in October, they started to take things apart. Uh, they did find extra <laughs> issues with um, several drains 
that were actually inoperable and that was causing some of the problems. Um, they were either at the incorrect height or there were cracks or other issues. Um, so <coughs> replacing those drains has again increased our cost um, several thousand dollars and um, we're looking to pay that out of trustee funds again. Um, I'll hand it over to you, Beth, so she can give you kind of some of the on-site perspective on the project. Um, okay. Well, hello. Thank you for having us. Um, I was up on the roof today. I was again on the roof. You can join me on the roof anytime. Uh, I was with a professional spotting me, so no worries. <laughs> um, our contractor uh, is named Scott Livernoy. He's very knowledgeable um, in, in the roof process. He's an engineer, as I understand it. And he works for the Garland Company, and they are overseeing the project and the contractors who are Corolla Roofing. So Scott came by today to check on the progress. We didn't have any roofers um, on site today. Um, the storm uh, last week delayed them, so they left our project, and they, they might be picking up some other work somewhere else or finishing a project somewhere else. So he said he was going to go up, and did I want to go up too? And I said, absolutely. So I was able to really see um, the materials that are already installed and what's left to come. He was able to walk me around the site, show me the new drains. Uh, they did find that all seven of the roof drains were inoperable, so all seven had to be replaced at the cost of $1,000 each, um, as Jennifer was saying. So that happened on Columbus Day. That was an, an exciting piece of information I received that day. Uh, and I went ahead and approved that work because otherwise we'd have to pack everything up and and there was no point in going forward because the leaks would continue. Um, some other things that are, are being addressed right now on the roof are um, the penthouses or doghouses, the vertical parts that, that come up with the windows on one side facing the DW, there are two. One is closer to the parking lot side, one is closer to the DW side. These um, part of the bid includes panels to be put on those, it's a, a slanted part has a panel, and the vertical parts also have a panel. Right now these vertical parts are brick. The brick is being insulated with a material that I could not tell you the name of it, but is, it is spun rock. It looks like um, a bunch of felt or fiberglass pushed together, it's about two inches thick, and it does not stay wet. So that's the insulation. Because it's rock, it won't uh, retain moisture in, in a way that a fabric might. Um, and then over that is going to be these panels. You might be able to see that some of the panels are, are ready up. They're kind of a gray color. Um, he chose some colors that would coordinate best with the existing material. Um, and I just kind of left that up to him because if it were me, I would pick red or something. So <laughs> it's not right. But um, so that's that's kind of where we are. Everything, all of the brick is um, that's not covered in this material yet is insulated with plastic. Um, they also uh, took the areas that uh, were showing uh, that they retained moisture last fall when we did a roof scan. Um, those areas have been um, cut and taken up. They've gone all the way down to the gypsum layer. That's when they found the problem with the drains. Those have been um, sealed up again, and uh, a coating has been put on, and then this white night uh, sealant coating has been put on. Um, they've also gone up to the slate roof part. Um, they've gone up three feet, removed the slate, put a, a roll of material across that. They're going to come back and do the white night under that and then replace the slate. So. He's really trying to address everything that they assessed during the roof scan and during later walkthroughs. Um, it, it seems to me, as a not a roofer, um, that it, it all seems wonderful. We did have a big rainstorm, you'll remember, in October, and this was a point when the project uh, was underway and the roof was actually open. So we found uh, the existing leaks were leaking during the storm because the roof was open, but we found some new leaks and the crew was there. So they were able to immediately address all of these leaks and get everything sealed up. Um, some things that we're kind of going to look at over the next year are the north window. Um, there was some leakage that was coming in. Kind of, sometimes we have a condensation problem. Sometimes that's because the, the circulation around the brick areas and around the window areas aren't uh, evaporating quickly enough. We're going to watch the north window over the next year. Uh, we get a we get some leakage when we have um, 
more of a horizontal rain or a very strong rain and it, and it blows to the window. Um, they've addressed the leak edge or the roof edge where there might have been leaking. They've addressed that part. They have a plan to put some more of the sealant on the brick around the top of the window and then kind of see see if it might be a window issue and then we'd have to address the window replacement. But uh, we all want to just wait and see if that's something that has to be done. Do you have any questions about this project? When do you project it to be complete? There, there is a week's worth of work left, uh, depending on the weather. But if they can get up there, it's five to seven days to be finished. Excellent. Hopefully soon. <laughs> soon. Hmm? It is. There's, you know, they get up there, and if there's been snow, they have to shovel out. And when I was up there, I climbed off the ladder onto a snowbank and made my way <laughs> you know, through the drifts. Um, and then they had shoveled out an area around that middle, um, you know, uh, penthouse, just, you know, a little pathway to work on, and then there's snow everywhere else. But they have to shovel. They have to make sure the, the snow is melting and, and draining properly into the drains. And, you know, that takes some time. Any other questions? Councilor Roth, um, With the um, 7000 extra dollars, mm -hmm. was that the 83, did you say? It's, now we're up to 92, 92. 200. OK. So. And, um, and with the snow on the roof, there was puddling and so on. Is that, are we? Will they be checking in the spring to make sure everything is proper? Or yeah, once, I mean, when I was up there originally last year, and I actually saw all of this huge puddling in certain areas of the roof. Um, when I was up there today, there's no way to tell where those spots, if they're still puddling, because they still have materials stacked <coughs> up, you know, that they're going to, the, the panels are all stacked up and covered. Everything is covered with tarp, and you you can't see those those puddling areas because it's it's covered with stuff. So once everything's put away and they've cleared the roof, um, Scott will come up and check the work to make sure it's um, up to his standard. And, and uh, sorry about that. Uh, you had mentioned that the warranty, if we only put one coat and came back later to do another, would be possibly less than ten years. What is okay. it doing it the way we've done it? Fifteen years now. Fifteen. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like it was a better investment. Yeah. Um, Stay Anyone else? Paul? The other, the other thing that our contractor told us, the reason why the job escalated to 90, $92,000 now, was that um, as he was going up there, there were some things that we weren't planning on doing. And he said, you might as well get them all done so there's no finger pointing. But uh, he also said that maybe in five to seven years, you might want to go back up there, wash the, the roof off, and put another layer of this white night on there, and that will extend your warranty even further. Mm -hmm. So that there are other options, and we feel comfortable with this gentleman that we're working with, uh, this Scott from Garland. He, uh, he does most of the school roofs too, but we really feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. We felt comfortable and passed him off to the library to do the project, and he's been... Uh, He's been right on top of it with payments and things of that sort. So he's making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. That's, that's Paul. Any other questions? Yes. I guess I just wanted to clarify. I appreciate the information and the feedback. So funding obviously escalated beyond your expectations, and you've got that covered with, with your funds that you have available. Correct. And that's not causing any particular, well, I'm sure it's causing hardship, but, <laughs> right. but it's not causing any particular hardships or anything that you need for us to address or help with or anything like that. No, right? not at this point. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the information, though. I come part of that roof, because when my kids were going to the library, I had millions of dollars in late fees I paid out. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still there with it. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I'm waiting for Councilor Rothhaus to ask for a plaque and dedication <laughs> of the roof. <laughs> All set. Well, thank you no, very much for the presentation. Could compete. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, why I refuse to take anywhere. You will let her use my car to take any, any books out. You too. We all yeah. that roof. Um, I would like to extend an invitation. Um, to all the counselors, uh, we're going to have an open house on the 17th of December um, at 430 to kick off our tasty tidings um, cookie week. 
um, where the, um, so at 4.30, our uh, board members will all be there. I can meet the rest of the board, um, see the little room um, decorated for the holidays. Uh, so please come on by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How's the seismograph working out? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. We had a school from Nashua come by a couple of weeks ago just as a field trip to very check cool. it out. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Any Thanks. readings? We get readings all the time. If it's over six, yeah, we'll pick it up, but we, we get readings all the time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, up on the roof, that's true. Okay. We did pick up that work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, that gets some great Just be quiet for how many years you got to bring that up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Down that way. <laughs> There's no public hearing. Any state representative or legislative updates? No. Town manager's report, Eileen. Okay, uh, the ramps for the F.E. Everett Turnpike Exit 12 in Merrimack will be closed for toll removal work on Saturday, December 6, 2014. It is expected that the northbound ramp will be closed from 8 a.m. to noon and the southbound ramp will be closed from noon to 4 p.m. Times may vary with the progress of work. Um, and I was asked to remind people that property tax bills are due on Monday, December 8th. Thank you. Merry Christmas, right? Sorry. <laughs> There's no consent agenda? Hey, talk to the legislature. They're the ones that tell us, hell, you want it has to go out and it has to be paid. <laughs> They're too busy up there right now. Yeah, I'll bet. Uh, no old business. New business. Recommendation for appointment of the Merrimack Senior Citizen Club representative member to the Parks and Recreation Committee. Town Council to consider the Merrimack Senior Citizens Club's recommendation to appoint Maureen Hall as the Merrimack Senior Citizen Club representative member to the Parks and Recreation Committee pursuant to Article 6-1 of the Town Charter. So moved. moved. Seconded. Motion made by Tom Mahan, seconded by Bill Boyd. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven zero zero. And I've been told that she was not coming this evening, so she will be sworn in by the town clerk. Okay, donation. Come on up. Donation acceptance <coughs> for the Merrimack Police Department submitted by Captain Peter Albert. Town Council to consider the acceptance of a donation of a universal microchip scanner valued at $300 from the American Chemical Club to be used by the Merrimack Police Department's Animal Control Officer pursuant to Charter Article 8-15 and RSA 31-95-E. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chairman. Uh, good evening. I uh, would like to thank you all for having a few moments here. Uh, to present this, our new uh, animal control officer, Mark Russomano, was in training uh, at the Animal Rescue League, and they um, gave him the information about this program uh, from the American Kennel Club. It's called AKC, uh, AKC Reunite. And um, he filled out an application, and they accepted it. Um, and so I'm here uh, to uh, ask for approval for this. This is basically a little show and tell here, but... This is uh, the scanner, um, and what happens is the uh, officer or the uh, animal control officer will run it along the body of the dog. The microchip will, uh, will come up on the screen here, and there's a um, website we can go to with that information, and uh, that'll help us uh, reunite owner and pet. So uh, we thought that this would be very helpful. It's another option uh, when we're out there, especially when we find a dog at inconvenient hours and the, the Animal Rescue League isn't open. So um, we're just uh, asking if we could accept this donation. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Seconded. Motion made by Tom Mahon, seconded by Bill Boyd. Any discussion, questions? Yeah, yes, does Tom. it scan both, both types of chips? Uh, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. You said it did. Uh, okay. I, you said it was yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, 
good answer. I have to remember that. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? I'll look it up. Though. That dog won't hunt, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, why don't we take a vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? None. Seven zero zero. Very good. Captain. Thank you. Uh, Captain, I don't know if the AKC has been thanked, but send them our thanks for the donation. I will. I'll Appreciate it. And uh, thank the town manager. I um, just want to say for recognizing the troops over the storm because uh, uh, our line officers and our supervisors uh, did a great job uh, throughout that storm. And at one point, Wednesday evening, we had over from uh, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., we had over 100 calls for service. Um, and that, so they did a great job, and they yeah. deserve uh, a good pat on the back for that. So thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, I was listening to the fire channel on my scanner. And that's when I found out the tree branch in the front of my house had fallen off one of my trees. It was blocking the road. Yeah. It was blocking the road. And then you looked Huge. out the window. Huge. Well, they moved it off the road, so. <laughs> okay, donation acceptance for the Merrimack Finance Department. Submitted by Finance Director Paul T. McCauley, Town Council to consider the acceptance of a donation of a Xerox color printer valued at $430 from an anonymous donor to the Finance Department pursuant to Charter Article 8-15 and RSA 31-95E. Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a couple weeks ago, one of my neighbors came up to me and he said, uh, I have this Xerox color printer. It's in my house. My wife wants me to clean out the office. It's a little bigger than what we need for uh, printing in our house. Would you be interested in accepting it for the finance department? And I said, sure. Um, we brought it in, had Chuck check it over. It lit up, it works fine. It's, uh, it's about a two year, two, two and a half year old printer, so it's, it's fairly new. <coughs> so, uh, well, for us it's new and for uh, <laughs> the gentleman it's new and it's, uh, it's uh, looked online. It's a, it's a workhorse um, with it and we ran a couple of test pages through it and it does have nice color and nice, uh, nice ink, nice toner. So uh, ran it through Chuck and Chuck believes it's a good working printer. Move approval. Second. Councilor Boyd made the motion. Councilor Woods seconded. Any discussion? Yes, John? Um, as with any printer, it seems like the, the materials to run the printer are always so much more than the cost right. of the printer. Do we have any idea what, it's, what that's going to do to us, or do we have any expectations of the, toners the, and inks and stuff like we that? Do, um, we do. Uh, we, we looked online. Yes, you're right. The, as everything, the inks and toners are a little bit more expensive. Um, we figure we can get about a year and a half out of the toner cartridges. And if they're new, and run them through that way, they're they're a little bit on on the pricey side for this machine. It's a, it's not a regular um, color printer, so to speak. It's a it's a phaser printer. So uh -huh. a phaser printer. Yeah, phasers on stud. Yeah, I heard the word. That's what I'm wondering about. Okay. Yeah, so it's a it's a, a phaser kind of printer, and uh, they are a little pricey. We priced them out, but they're no more expensive than the other color printers we have that are HPs throughout the town. Um, and like I said, we figure we can get about a year, year and a half out of these, these cartridges, depending how much color gets printed on it. Uh, it's actually going in the deputy finance director's office, whose printer was dying and we were going to have to buy a new one, so the timing couldn't be better. And color printing is valuable to you? Or? It is valuable because we do, um, we do our signatures now are in color. On the documents, it's no longer the black. We, we put them in blue, um, so that we know that it's coming off a of color copier. And uh, a lot of the reports we do, the graphing and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to look at the colors than trying to figure out which tone of gray it is. Maybe we should ask the town manager to monitor his bills for tone for green ink. <laughs> I monitor all the bills. For green ink. Good comeback. For green ink. <laughs> You just got to change the yellow because I noticed in the CIPs. Oh, it's useless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were down in the yellow. Print. Other thing. <laughs> that's our beautiful copier. That's uh, okay. we won't go there. Okay, did we finish up with the vote? Did we vote on that? No, we didn't vote. Okay, just we'll just conversation. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? None. Seven zero zero. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Okay.
Okay. Thank you, neighbor. Yes. Thanks. Thank Mr. Anonymous. Yeah, actually, I have a, we have a letter already. And they're taking their places in front of us. I'll give you a minute to get set up. <laughs> and a minute to complete. I think they need a little more. Ah, this is above ah, and beyond what we already have. Yeah, this document. is the presentation. That we're okay, this is about the review of the capital improvement plan. Town manager and finance director will review the CIP that will be presented to the planning board on December 16th, pursuant to Charter Article 8-9. Go right ahead, I mean. Uh, before you tonight is the um, annual capital improvement pl uh, plan that includes through two from 2014 to 2021. Um, this is um, a, a document that goes also goes before the planning board, but we like you to have a look at it first. So. Um, it also gives an idea of the things that are coming up, what to expect for, cause, because often there are expenses that, particularly here in Merrimack where we have so many capital reserve funds, we like to, you need to really plan out um, when, how much money you put into the capital reserve funds for, uh, to have enough money to pay for various things when they come up. So um, what we did, uh, probably um, well, when I first came here about three and a half years ago we decided that we would um, carve out a place in the budget for capital reserve funding um, in the past and we can show we'll show you you'll see this a little bit um, beyond here in another slide but um, in the past, this was seemed to be an easy place to raid when you wanted to cut when somebody wanted to cut the budget. Um, the the deposits in uh, is is easy to cut. Is like I said, is easy to cut. And there were there were years when there were only there was only about three hundred thousand dollars going in, and then the same amount of expenditures around one point five million dollars was going out every year. So the funds kept getting smaller and smaller. So um, rather than allowing other issues to come in and go after this particular um, section of the budget, we, as I said, we wanted to have a s distinct place for the capital reserve funding and to um, measure it against this um, against this this uh, measure every year so um, this is kind of some minimum funding that we did uh, about three years ago and um, we knew for instance that we needed ambulances periodically and that we needed um, communications equipment and computer computer equipment, um, highway vehicles and fire equipment, ambulances and road infrastructure, which is um, <coughs> primarily used for uh, the 20% uh, match for bridges and for reconstruction work and also for drainage work, is that correct? Sir? And then um, about uh, 70, there's $75,000 um, amount of money that is is put in there for various pieces of equipment for the solid waste division um, so that's that's where we start so here here you see the historic funding that we that I was just talking about um, if you look under 2010 2011 uh, year you can see that um, the double underline the line where there's a line above and below. You can see that that particular year, um, only three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars was placed into the capital reserve fund, um, and then the following year, five hundred thirty-eight thousand um, dollars. And as I said, the expenditures kept coming at the same rate, and then 
um, what happened was the capital reserve fund started depleting um, and we've we've been trying to very steadily improve that it's it's difficult to to catch back up but um, we've made a valiant effort at trying to um, put away this money uh, I, I can't say enough about the program here in Merrimack um, for saving for things that you know rather than going out to bond for things. Um, Merrimack does a fabulous job in keeping up with that kind of thing. We know what needs to be spent. If we need a fire truck and it's $400,000, we put $100,000 in the, in the budget for four years and pay for it out of cash. And that's really an admirable thing. Um, and consequently, uh, the town has very little debt. So um, as, as you can see, we're, we're getting um, this, this particular year, 1516, we placed in the budget um, $1.5 million, almost $1.5 1.6 million dollars there's two um, there's two areas where that we um, that are the the main areas where you see a big um, increase uh, road infrastructure was at four hundred thousand dollars last year uh, normally it's it's in the six hundred thousand dollar range that particular year we only used four hundred thousand dollars because we were doing some sewer projects and we were able to <laughs> kind of piggyback on onto them for um, some of the drainage and uh, the the bridge that was done the Magaw bridge uh, was a lesser um, a lesser cost than some of the other ones that we have coming forward so um, we added another two hundred thousand dollars into um, road infrastructure and those are that is primarily the match for the upcoming bridges that we see because the um, there's two bridges that are that are going to be in the 3.5 million dollar range each so um, six hundred thousand dollars will just about make our match um, the other area that you see an increase in is in the in the communication, communication equipment. Where am I? Oh, Perfect. computer. Okay, uh, and that has to do with um, the radio console and um, communications equipment at the police department. Um, in a few years, they anticipate that the the um, system that they currently have is um, will no longer they'll they won't be able to replace the pieces and parts to it uh, they're already having a hard time with it and um, they uh, obviously count on that a great deal so um, we I have placed two hundred thousand dollars in there um, for that for that project so that would be ongoing for a couple of years okay so Anything else on there? Um, how old is the sure. current communications? Is it then? We talked about replacing the darn thing. The spot system or whatever it is? That was the old one. Pardon? Spot is different than what they're talking about here. Okay. wonder what they're talking about. This is the dispatch center, the microwaves, um, things of that sort. I have a memo here from the police department that explains it in detail but it's uh, basically for dispatch um, dispatch is about um, it was purchased about 10 to 15 years ago is and when we bought when we moved in over there is that when they did it I think so it's the console with the monitors right. and the, the microwave we had to replace a microwave up at one of the towers just recently and they had a really hard time finding the replacement parts for that microwave um, they, they eventually did um, dealing with our company they said that a lifespan for a piece of equipment like that in our dispatch center is probably 10 to 15 years we're right at the 15 year mark we're pushing it out to 18 years um, and they thought the system would be able to last for 18 years granted there would we had to replace that microwave down there so that's why they think it could last a little bit longer but that's the expense that's coming down the road in 17 18 for in the tune of about five hundred thousand dollars to replace that there's a small piece of it 
fifty-four thousand dollars in this year's this year's uh, capital reserve. And like I said, I do have a memo from the police department. Oh. Dan already has one. Thanks. 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 Than
That's just the resurfacing of the roads. Uh, we also show um, the remainder of the DW Highway um, resurfacing. So from, um, from Chamberlain Bridge. Bridge to the uh, Reeds Ferry Lumber, <laughs> um, that, that is what that project is. So um, we, as you know, we've been saving for that $50,000 a year um, until it needs to be done. Um, and that is projected to, or is proposed to be done this year. Oh, okay. Uh, so you might want to know, but um, rather than get into every single year of um, what's being proposed, we're going to get into um, some of the some of the big things. Big ticket items are going to be your bridges, so we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, but uh, there are some some physical infrastructure buildings that uh, have been floating around. Um, as as being necessary um, in the uh, throughout the years and so we have placed the fire department south station in the 1718 year um, primarily to be funded by bonds two hundred thousand dollars to come out of capital reserves and the six hundred fifty thousand dollars from the mall is still sitting there um, the other one would be the the highway garage, which is being proposed to be done in, or put on the ballot on, uh, where is it? 16, 17, 16, 17 three point three million dollars in the sixteen seventeen budget, and then there's um, a placeholder at the very end, two thousand twenty two thousand twenty one for the library. Uh, they really didn't, um, they're, they're really not prepared to uh, make any proposals at this time, but they didn't want to have, have this out of your sight. They want to make sure that you, you know, it's clear that it's going to be proposed at some, at some point. Um, don't really know the number yet, but it's placed in here at $6 million. And also, um, the other thing is, athletic fields, which again is a placeholder for 2020 through 2021. So this just, here's your, here's the colors for you. Um, it just shows you where the proposed funding um, is coming from. Uh, in 15, in 2015, 16, again, the, the second column of numbers. Uh, $820,000 to come from the capital reserve funds, $675,000 to come from the budget, which is for um, road resurfacing, $125,000 from the, the uh, road improvement um, uh, fee that you pay through your uh, motor vehicle permits, and that's also for roads. And we also show the state aid portion because we um, we budget on, on a gross basis, so we need to show the state aid um, coming in and going out. So that state aid is for the Bean Bridge, Bean Road Bridge. Now here are the the bridge projects that have been done and are being proposed to be done over the past eleven years. Um, you see um, Bedford Road near Joppa Road being done. Uh, it was a, in 2008, which was a 80-20 match, uh, the state being 80%. Turkey Hill Road was paid 100% from um, the stimulus funds. Federal, federal. federal st stimulus funds. Um, Amherst Road um, Bridge, the town, did that. I believe that's a culvert, 2012. Wire Road um, was one that was done with a 80-20 match with the state in 2013. Manchester Street um, was in collaboration with the city of Nashua and um, the state. So the town spent 5%, Nashua spent 15%, and the state paid 80% for that project. 
Um, McGaw Bridge is scheduled to be done uh, this year for a total of 1647000 Bean Road for next year. Uh, Bedford Road in 2017 and U.S. Route 3 over Babuzik Brook in 2019 for a total over 11 years of $16,252,000 worth of bridges. And that's a very, uh, um, on it, honestly, it's, it's a pretty amazing thing to see that many bridges being done in one town um, and to be able to take advantage of that 80% split is, um, you can't beat it. So um, out of the funds that the town has spent, we've spent um, less than $3 million for almost 17, well, $16 million worth of bridges. Um, we've spent in the past and will be spending in the very near future. It's the most, it's the most aggressive bridge schedule in the state, we were told. And fortunate enough to be able to. Mm -hmm. right. right, exactly. Um, so here's the Bean, the bean Road re replacement. Um, shows you some pictures of, um, of the various things that need to be done with the Bean Road, um, some of the issues that it has. Um, that's scheduled for this upcoming year. And that was the bridge that uh, we just dropped the weight limit to 10 ton a couple of months ago through the state recommendation. So it needs to be done. That's similar to the same bridge that we just replaced on Wire Road. It's the same kind of culvert. You could use the same pictures. <laughs> the same Maybe true. they are. It's true. They may be. Yeah. So uh, stormwater drainage improvements, as you saw, there was an expenditure there uh, pro projected or um, proposed for approximately $100,000 for uh, drainage, stormwater drainage improvements. And it's anticipated, depending on um, funding and the bids that come in, um, to do Turkey Hill Road near McQuestion, DW Highway at uh, Natticook Brook, okay. Bird Street and Valley okay. View Drive, Amherst Road, Wilson Hill Road, Executive Park Drive, Thornton Road West, and Town Wide Basin Repairs. Paving and infrastructure. Um, these are. This is the eight hundred thousand dollars that um, we showed as being um, spent. Um, Six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars coming from the operating budget, and one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars coming from the uh, fees that uh, motor vehicle fees. We wanted to show you some of a lot of the um, roads that have been done over the past five or six years. Um, I think it's important and I think people uh, should know and see how much how much uh, increase that has has been placed on road infrastructure and repaving the roads um, over the past several years um, and we've been able to complete a lot of roads. Um, so there's uh, 2010, 11, 12, 13, uh, and what is projected for 2015 would be um, Babuzik Lake Ro Road from DW Highway to O'Gara Drive, Wire Road from DW Highway to Bedford Road, Danforth, Cummings, Hassel, Hutchinson, and Cowan? Cowan? Uh, anyway, and, and again, I wanted I, I would like to make sure that you understand that um, this is based on funding. If we get all the funding that we expect um, and for the bids to come in at a certain level. Paving of DW Highway, this kind of speaks for itself. Talks about the, the, um, the traffic counts, 13,000 to 16,000 cars a day. Uh, going o across DW Highway, uh, we did uh, in, when did we did the last one? 2011, we did from um, Greeley Street to the Chamberlain Bridge, and now it's, now this is the rest of it within the, within the town's um, urban compact. 
So here are the minor projects. Um, we talked about the money that um, we're proposing to put in. We talked about the major projects that um, were being proposed for um, for infrastructure improvements, and the minor projects are primarily uh, equipment. So um, in 2015-16, which is the second column of numbers, the, there's that $54,000 that Paul was talking about, which is the start of the communications um, of the radio, radio um, upgrade at the police station. Uh, then uh, $200,000 for an, a new ambulance to replace another uh, one from 2005 that has 100,000 100, miles on it. There is $82,334 approximately <laughs> um, to be spent on SCBA equipment should the grant not come in. Uh, fire operations, a cardiac uh, defibrillator monitor transmitter to be placed on one of the ambulances. Um, a six-wheel dump truck for the highway department, a loader for the highway department, and three patrol vehicles for the police department, and a stake body truck, not sure what that is, but um, that would be for the solid waste division. And uh, then th another $35,000 for licenses for um, the computer systems. This is just catching up on our licenses. Yeah. We're trying to catch up uh, servers, uh, operating systems, things of that sort with the personal computers. Okay, so this shows you some of the um, some of the other expenses that go on for the future for future years, um, trailers and mowers and uh, pickups and and that kind of thing. I've re I've removed the boats for whatever that's worth, um, and uh, then. 28 the the GIS um, we will have saved for enough money in 2016-17 to do the GIS okay. including the flyover program and a reevaluation 2016-17 yeah. depending on how we come in with our uh, rate yeah we're doing pretty good we're um, I think we're just over 100% yeah, or right, right around really the close to 100%. 100, 101. We've been fluctuating between 100 and 101. Mm -hmm. right. So that if if we stay in that realm, that will get pushed out. But right now we're planning around 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Here's some, um, some of the expenses that we um, see coming ahead, coming forward in the wastewater treatment uh, division and um, from cable <coughs> franchise fees, these various pieces of equipment. So here's the, the funding sources for, for that. Um, in 1516, 736,334 dollars. <laughs> and the reason why that number is like that is because of that $82,334 dollars. Usually the numbers are much more round than that um, for the SCBA equipment, $106,000 to be funded through the budget, which is for the th three police vehicles, um, and uh, user fees for the wastewater treatment plant and media cable franchise fees. Questions? questions yes Bill I don't know if Eileen can answer the question maybe director for either Rick or, or Kyle <clears throat> in the past couple of years Bedford Road from Pearson to DW during the winter and afterwards I mean they've they've patched it the last couple of years have where does that 
stretch of road rank on the PCI for new paving. I figured. Okay. Okay. It's not memorized. <laughs> you don't have it off the top of your head. <laughs> Any other questions or comments, Tom? Uh, so on that last page, you you talked about the minor uh, project funding and you, the user fees from the wastewater treatment fund. This year, seventy-five thousand. Next year, one hundred eighty-five thousand. That's those are big fluctuations of those. Changes in fees, are they coming out of a, a, a reserve fund or are they coming out of? They're coming out of their capital reserve fund that they do have, um, and that's all been, uh, this CIP has also been put in their rate study sheets, <coughs> so it's all taken into account as it moves forward. Um, the two big things are uh, there's a, a bobcat with accessories for the cross country sewer maintenance that we're responsible for, and that's $75,000 in 1516. And they're continuing with an uptick of manhole sewer line rehabilitation from 25. They're increasing that by 50,000 to 75 thousand dollars, and those are the two that are the reasons why that moves from 75 thousand to 185. But it's already been accounted for in the rate study, and it's coming out of a savings account. We already do have this money set aside for. Okay, so the fees are going into that fund. How much? Do you have any idea how much is in that fund? Or yes, I do. Um, you don't have to go chasing it. You can tell me later. But well, you're going to see it later. You'll see it in oh, okay. The You'll see it in the budget. All right. Thank you. You have to someone's microphone. Once again, I'd like to stress that this is just this is an overview, and that once the once. Um, the department heads come before you as they do um, individually. You can ask um, much more detailed questions. Bill, did you have a question? Yeah, it was a comment that Paul made, and we have the we have the most aggressive bridge project schedule in the state. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Very good thing. It's a good thing because uh, we get the bridges up there, and they get put on the uh, get put on for our eighty percent because they know we'll fund them. And that's the other thing. They know that we, the town has taken the uh, initiative to, to fund <coughs> these bridges and, and the importance of the <coughs> bridges in the town. So it helps, us in the, it helps us in the long run that if something, God forbid, happens with one of our bridges in the town, we need to go to the state. Right. It's like the proof is in the pudding. We right. The reason why Turkey, we didn't pay a dime for Turkey Hill Road is because we had all the drawings ready to go. And we were fortunate enough, Ara came in and the feds you picked up the 80 percent and the state picked up the 20 percent because we were shovel ready. And Kyle, Kyle has, one, you know, has a lot of these bridges there, shovel ready for the most part. We just have to do a couple of tweaks here and there with them and <coughs> we get them up to the state through DES and In the federal one. one. It's really remarkable. Yeah. Right. When we jumped a year ago with Kyle, when we changed yeah. some of them from state funded to federal funded. Right, yeah. and that's because they know we'll, we'll, be, we'll be. We're lucky to have Kyle on board to help we'll be, us uh, we'll, we'll be shovel the ready. skids, so, so to speak. <laughs> you know, we got other communities around us that yeah, aren't shovel bad. ready, and yeah. they they keep on getting pushed out yeah. in the project bill. So it's pretty good that we are this aggressive with it. Or they don't have the 20%. Right, timing is everything. Is okay. What's the defi definition of good luck is preparation? Meeting opportunity. Yep. Did you write that down, Bill? <laughs> I'm sure he's been to the seminar. But I know Bill. Any other questions or that comments? That was Vince Lombardi. <laughs> so, uh, John? Yeah, thanks. In, in one of the pages you gave us that you haven't talked about today, um, you talked about proposed property tax to finance the CIP. And, you go back a couple of years. Last last year it was 1.44 million, and this year it's 1.538 million. And then it kind of steeply ramps up to three years from now it's 2.67 million to finance the CIP and stays somewhat level up there at the two and a half million level. Historically, have we been at that level, or is this suddenly a, a change in attitude or action that we're going to start putting that much money in the bank accounts? 
Well, um, what, what we've been, as I was saying, um, we're trying to recover from the days when we put $300,000 into the capital reserve fund and we're, we're spending at, at the same rate. Um, this, this particular year, we're just about breaking even. So for what the amount of money that's going into the capital reserve fund is about what's com coming out. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to, um, some, some of this has to do with the bridge projects continuing on at the same $600,000 level. Um, some of this has to do with, um, with highway equipment increasing the the cost of increasing and you know keeping up with with highway equipment and that sort of thing um, fire equipment and so so I would say and bonds yes, and, then the bonds. and then the bonds the bond projections are in there as well so um, I guess what I would say is that um, when we were originally talking about this maybe three years ago. Um, we had hoped to get up to the $1 million level, but we really needed to be higher than that. And that's what we're trying to um, get to right now, to the point where we can get our, our bridges done, we can get our roads done, we can um, purchase our equipment um, on, a, on a regular basis and save for it. So yes. So you um, expect the two and a half million to be a number that we would look at into the future? Yeah, two two six and two two five to two six. Two five to two six, um, including debt. So um, from where we are right now, which is one point five six million dollars to um two thousand twenty twenty one at one one million seven hundred and twenty five thousand plus um, debt service on uh, this is for the um, for the the fire station for the uh, public works garage and I don't think it includes the library as well okay. for the last year. Yeah. Oh, so that includes everything that yeah. includes all the, uh, that the, includes all the new debt if everything if everything was the past, that would be including everything. Yeah, so the new debt starts in 2016-17 um, with a half year's interest, and then um, in 17-18, that looks like just the highway garage. That's just the highway garage. <coughs> and then 18-19 would be? It goes down a little bit because we lose a bond at that point. Yes, we right. do. We lose That's a right. bond at that point. So how much are we talking about in debt annually? Well, um, if you look at, at the sheet. Um, Which sheet? Sorry. The okay. very first page. Very first page. page. Yep. Um, there, it shows up at the top underneath. Uh, sorry, I don't have it on the screen, but um, the first line, the first vertical line under yeah. the, the years is the, the outstanding debt that we currently have. And you can see uh, it moves along just about the same until you get to 2018-19 when it drops off sharply um, as we lose a bond, one of the bonds. Um, then in, so um, in 2016-17, 2015-16, uh, we, we do owe $449,000 in debt, principal and interest in the general fund. In 2016-17, we owe $435,000 Four hundred and sixty-six dollars. We've added to that another sixty-eight thousand dollars for a half-year interest on the on the um, public works garage. So, um, are, are you asking me about the annual payments? No, or well, no, I, I I see that now. I'm okay. So so basically, we're going from about a million in in capital reserve fund expenditures up to one point seven, one point nine. Right. Um, when you take out the debt factors. Right. And That's right. Or capital reserve deposits. Deposits. Oh, yes. Yes. And that's just, and we expect to continue up at that level yes. of 1.7. Mm -hmm. We'd hope. We, we hope to. Because we again, we expect that ex those expenses to continue to extend out there and replacement costs and all right. that kind of good stuff. And again, it's um, it's such a wonderful thing to do. 
Um, I'm used to coming from several years ago from a community that used to bond everything. So we had a lot of debt and no capital reserve funds. So to see this, to pay for, um, to actually save for and pay for things with cash and plan for it is, um, it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of discipline for a community to do something like this. Because it's the, it's the easiest place to raid. And also avoid spikes in the future. That's right. Yes, Dan. I, I, I know this is just the beginning of the process, so I'm just going to, I'm floating this as I'm thinking of the next couple of months as we're all uh, talking. Um, sometimes you take advantage of what the situation gives you, and in the marketplace, as you know, borrowing money right now is cheap. And over the last two meetings, we've been hit with a $500,000 police communication um, item, uh, fire apparatus, another approaching $400,000. So we're almost at a million dollars for our police and fire. When you add in some of the bridges, some of the other expenses, I'm not opposed to borrowing some money. These are, if, if the communications, for instance, is a 20-year buy-in on brand new uh, microwaves, et cetera, uh, the fire department, same thing. It's you know these these this equipment isn't good for just three or four five years. It's ten years or fifteen years or more. Bridges again are a twenty year project. It's nice that we're so lean right now on debt, um, but I, I find it I, I don't want to squeeze the taxpayers out there to put in almost two million every year um, when maybe there if we lump some of this stuff together, even a six wheel dump truck can be twenty years. You know, and if that. That's a four hundred thousand dollar vehicle. There's some things here that just really the, the ticket item cost is so great. I'd like to come back and maybe have a discussion about maybe we pull in a bunch of items that we ha that have a a long lifespan, and we maybe we borrow. I don't know. I'm just throwing it five million dollars over twenty years, and I see that debt number instead of having to pony up so much every year. <laughs> there, there's got to be a balance, I think, sometimes that, and maybe we're reaching that. It, it's great to, to be debt-free, and me, but maybe it's not the smartest thing either. So I, I wonder if you had, yeah, we're interested in to look at the numbers. I understand your point, and the reality is a sort of philosophical discussion as right. well. The whole idea of bonding, and for long-term, right. future, you know, versus paying now. I criticized Bedford many times on you know borrowing, you know. Thirty million dollars, um, or was it even more than that? It was more than that. Um, it's on. I don't. I, but maybe there's a happy medium somewhere. Yeah. You know that we're borrowing enough for things that are important. Like right now, tonight, that that police uh, microwave system. That kind of. I have to be honest. That blows <laughs> me away. Uh, half a million dollars to for communications. For communications. Uh, boy, that that that's a tough one. And that's yet, a lot when of money. you bond yeah. it. What, and you'd have to do the comparison, which is probably what you would end up doing. Right. Is a comparison of the cost of the debt yeah. versus the payment. Right. I mean, I don't know what it would be. It just seems that like there's a lot of items that are coming up this this year, and maybe maybe there's a way to pull things together and think of a more of a of a payment plan through through bonding. Eileen. Uh, I I see that as well, but some of that is replacing of equipment. Some of the, these pieces of equipment are $200,000, $250,000 for a dump truck, for instance, and you might need another one next year. So borrowing for, for that um, doesn't really make sense. For borrowing for a highway garage or borrowing for um, a one-time expense like the, like the uh, communication center or at the police station makes sense. But some of these large ticket items are actually an annual saving for something that we sure, right. need. And I, that's for me, that's how I try to look at it. If it's a new structure, I definitely believe in the bonding. But if, if, it's, a, if it's an annual maintenance thing, where we know the stock <coughs> packs are going to have to be replaced. Um, maybe that's something that we do prepare for. It. And, and as they're wearing out, we're just offsetting that, you know, you know, paying for it as we use it, I guess, and yeah. and then it's ready to go for the next round. But but a worthy discussion, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah at some is. point. Yeah. It is worth a discussion. Like I said, it's early on. 
tonight we're getting the, a lot of the numbers here and we still got have many. to absorb it. Right, right. <laughs> no. But I agree. A half a million for communications equipment. Well, then, you know, two weeks ago we were hit with the fire department's request. So you put those two projects together, it's like, ouch. It's, yeah. That's right. Any other questions or comments on the CIP? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're back here. <laughs> Next project, which is going to give us heartburn, presented presentation of the proposed 2015-16. Okay, go right ahead. Councilor Mahan is being excused at 8:20. Thank you. Presentation of proposed 2015-16 town manager budget. Town manager will present her recommended 2015 budget to the town council. Take your time. I um, I'd like to begin by saying that this that the budget process uh, a lot of work goes into the budget process before I even get it. Um, Paul McCallie and his staff do a lot of the um, a, most, uh, I would say probably 60 or 70 percent of the budget is done by the finance department. They do all the salary amounts. It can be very complicated. Um, somebody might um, have a step in the middle of the year and so each person, each individual um, amount of money for wages is done by the finance department and checked by the the department so for instance he would go through and he would calculate every individual's wages for that year and then he would send it to the police department for them to review it and make sure that he hasn't um, missed anything um, then you'll also see your health insurance your retirement information your workers comp um, and um, FICA and all that kind of thing is calculated by Paul's office. So you can be assured that everything is consistent throughout the budget. There's no, um, it, back years ago, departments used to put money in there and kind of hide it in there, um, but there's no hiding of anything in here. It's all done by Paul's office and reviewed by the departments. So a good deal of the budget has our, including, um, you know, all the salaries and benefits items as well as electricity and gasoline and ga um, natural gas and those types of things have already been calculated. Uh, property and liability insurance and um, electricity and telephone have all been done by I uh, give, give me some more. Um, <laughs> so a lot. His department does an awful lot, and they they deserve a lot, an awful lot of credit for for doing this. But it it makes the process um, more precise and um, uniform throughout the budget. So you'll see. Uh, you know, we don't call somebody and say, "Oh, we're projecting that health insurance to go up five percent, for instance," and they'll they'll put some number together. Paul does it. So, um, so anyway, so when I get the budget, um, we uh, take a look at uh, at everything. We meet with the larger departments to talk about um, the the things, different things that they're proposing, um, increases that we're seeing that they um, that they have proposed, increases that um, that we um, that we are seeing as in an overall fashion like uh, insurance rates and that kind of thing. Health insurance rates are a big thing. Um, so we're going to start with the revenues. The way that, that a tax rate is calculated is you start with the expenditures and you subtract out all the revenue that comes from other sources. And I, I people find it very um, surprising to find that we bring in revenue of almost uh, a little over eight million dollars a year from other sources other than property taxes the largest part of which obviously is motor vehicle permits uh, nearing four million dollars a year 
So you take your expenditures, you subtract out your, uh, in a simplistic fashion, you, you take your expenditures, you subtract out your revenues from other sources, and that's why this is important in, um, in, the, in the mix. Um, so this is why we talk about revenue. So you take your expenditures, subtract out your revenues, and then you have an amount that you go to the taxpayers for. So this is the revenue piece. And um, this year, um, we, the, the um, health trust is projecting to, to um, give us a rebate of $315,000. Um, the $240,000 represents uh, $75,000 that, that we had last year versus three fifteen dollars now. So it's, a, it's an increase of revenue of $240,000 net. Um, motor vehicle permits, we are projecting that they're going up. They go up a, they're going up a little bit. As the economy improves, um, motor vehicle permits, you see motor vehicle permits moving up. Uh, but we try and be very, um, we try and be very careful with that because it can it can vary. Even even to the last month, um, this past year, we were very surprised at June's tally, and we we really didn't even know what um, the ending fund balance was going to be because um, June was a really great month. It happened to be a really great month, and it pushed us over um, well over. And we had that extra um, month, our, right? Yeah. So uh, current use, we have increased by um, fifty thousand dollars, and that generally comes from the assessing department. If they have had inquiries from um, from developers, um, I'm not sure what these specifically are, but oh, flatly. Oh, the old blood. Okay. Old blood road by the middle school up that way. Flatly's not in current use, I don't believe. No, flat. Um, the property over by Flatley is not in current use. Also, um, down off of Amherst Road, the new development going in by the farm, down by uh, Salhegan River to Tum Masian's farm down there. Those those are the two properties that we're looking to get some current use money from. So uh, interest on taxes, delinquent taxes, um, an increase of twenty thousand dollars. State rooms and meals taxes, an increase of forty five thousand dollars. Um, interest rates on um, on the money that we have in the bank um, they're predicted to stabilize uh, I don't know how they can get to any it's lower at really <laughs> yeah, it has been it's pretty bad it actually has been fluctuating, fluctuating down <laughs> it went from Over point the past oh, yeah. it went from basically 0.03 down to okay. almost zero. Oh, so it's stabilizing at zero. So it's going to yeah. stabilize. Okay. It's going to stabilize where we're going to get. Going to the it minus can't go negative, <laughs> well, it might. It might. Well, it's we have to put it in the mattress right. then. We, we have more. we have seventy five thousand dollars in for revenue for our interest rate interest revenue on our accounts. We we think that that's going to be a good number. We've been as low as thirty thousand in years past the last couple of years. So we figure $75,000 will stabilize at the $75,000 amount, at least for next year, and then there should be an uptick after that. And um, it doesn't apply at this current time, but one of the reasons why you want to have a healthy fund balance is because it, it in normal times when the interest rates are 4, 5, 6, 7 percent, it's, an, it's a source of revenue that you can count on every year without touching the the fund balance. Um, then we saw a decrease in the motor vehicle infrastructure revenue. If you saw that before, it was $135,000 last year. That's that that um, fee that gets added to your um, motor vehicle permit. Um, we showed it at 135 last year. Um, it's actually coming in close to $125,000. So that decreases the amount so of it, yeah. It, if the registrations are going up why would that number be going down the same number of vehicles are being registered people are buying newer vehicles so if you buy a brand new vehicle it costs you more to register it than if you have a five seven ten year old vehicle so that's why more vehicles are going up but, but this fee is a fixed fee fixed fee based on the registrate number of registrations so fewer yeah, registrations. So you're registering fewer less regi cars? yeah people are registering less cars but, but more, more expensive, expensive cars. cars or newer cars. Yeah. 
Okay. And it's been I wouldn't right have around expected there. the registration number to go down particularly at this point. Well, it has been. We're, we're basing it on last year's actual. Uh, then uh, administrative charges to special revenue funds. Um, as you probably know, um, we the general fund takes in a quite a quite a bit of money from the other funds like the sewer fund, um, the uh, parks and recreation um, fund, the day camp fund, and um, and outside details and that kind of thing. They pay. Um, for Paul and his services. Oh, that's administrative um, charges. Right. Okay. So those are going down a little bit. Um, yeah. Legal. Things of that and, and that's based on a formula that's done. Um, so, so, so the total amount of non-tax revenue that is um, the projected to change is $350,000 net increase. And it's primarily that big amount of money that we're getting from um, from the health trust. That's the biggest part by far. So appropriations is a real mixed bag. Um, there are a lot of categories here that went up and down. So um, we wanted to kind of go over some of them with you in um, in broad in a broad sense. Um, New Hampshire retirement costs have gone up by $101,000. It, it affects the town by $101,000. To give you a sense of what we're talking about in terms of only the employer contribution. I'm not talking about the employee. I'm talking about the employer. Um, the, uh, a regular employee who is not a police or fireman, uh, the, the town is paying on their behalf 11.7% of their wages into the New Hampshire re retirement system. It was 10.77. Um, a police officer, it, uh, the, the current rate is 25.30% of their wages goes into New Hampshire retirement system on behalf of the employer. Um, it's going up to 26.38 percent. The fire fire employees, um, it's going from 27.74 percent up to 29.16 percent of every do every dollar of wages uh, goes in from the employer to the New Hampshire retirement system to fund the system. So on top, so make sure I understand. So you have salaries, you have benefits, da, da, da. On top of that, you have to pay this percentage into the retirement mm -hmm. system. Yes. We're, we're paying 27. 29.16% for a firefighter. So for every dollar in salary, we're paying 29 pay cents to New Hampshire retirement. Excuse me? They're paying 11? No. No, they're paying. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because it was 93 and it went up 2%, so I believe it's 11.3%. No, he's talking about what, what yeah. the, the firefighter and police department are paying. I thought it was no. over here. Yeah, it's, it's over 11. Both of them are over 11. Police and fire both are over 11. The, That's a, crazy. A regular employee, uh, you know, that isn't a police and, and fire mm -hmm. employee is paying 7%. The town is right. paying 11.17% for a firefighter or a police officer. I believe it's um, 11 point three percent that they are paying and we're paying um, either twenty six percent or twenty nine percent depending what, on what what's category. going on with the school they've got to be zapped no too. Uh, no, not, it's group no one. Um, it's, it's still like group one employees. so they're oh, well they've gone it? up they've they've gone up to fourteen point one six percent but they, it's they it's yeah yeah and they were right around the line but still year. it's still a cost of it, yeah, yeah yeah it's it's just a surprising surprisingly large amount and as you know um, probably uh, I think it was three years ago um, the the state used to pay a percentage um, right. and it, it decreased and then decreased to zero at one point I believe they were paying 35 percent of the employer share for teachers and for police officers and firefighters and now they're paying nothing so um, that's that's an increased cost. In the past, 
the, those costs when when they went to a hundred percent the increases were in the five hundred seven hundred thousand dollar range uh, of an increase to the town all at once property and liability insurance came in at a seven percent uh, guaranteed maximum rate that's what that stands for GMR um, coming to a to, to an increase of eleven thousand dollars I wanted to point out to you this Nashua Transit increase of $6,500. It's a large percentage increase. Um, I know it's a small dollar amount, but um, I have not met with them or gotten the facts and figures from them um, about why the increase. I've, I've heard that it's been needed, but I've never gotten the data from them. So I'm told that they're going to come and meet with me and go over um, what what makes this up and what you know what the re ridership is and where where people are going and that kind of thing because it's um, it's a big increase percentage wise so did they present that to you as an assessment or did they ask for that increase they asked for that they, they sent us a letter asking us for the increase we put what they requested in the letter um, they have a new director down there a new community development director down there and she's uh, been more upfront with us in providing us some feedback and she's working on some information we've asked for more information and she's working on getting us that information um, and right now we put the put the number in there in the budget as the maximum in, just in case all the numbers come in and all the backup comes in to to meet that if it doesn't then we'll be making a recommendation later on in the budget process to bring that back to a flat line but what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I put it in here so you that you could see that even though it's not a do large dollar amount, it's a very large percentage increase. Um, I'm not sure what the percentage increase is, but 25%. 25%. Yeah. Going from 24 to 30. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, that clearly will have to be looked at and, and we'll do that work um, as well as and, and make sure we provide it to you once we get it. Um, electricity, we see an increase of $35,000 overall. Natural gas, an increase of $9,000. Uh, vehicle maintenance, $27,000. Office and communications equipment, $16,000. These are all uh, projected um, increases. General building maintenance, $27,000. Minor equipment purchases, $32,000. Uh, tipping fees increased this year by $1 per ton uh, t for an increase of $7,500. Recycling tipping fee is $5 per ton. It was zero. Um, now we're paying $5 per ton, so that's about $8,000. Um, the disposal of electronics is $11,000. I believe we're there's there's a matching revenue that goes with that. Um, we the library has requested and we have placed in the budget seven thousand dollars for additional um, library materials um, there are in in terms of staffing uh, and I, I, in my opinion this is one of the most important um, one of most important positions that I would like you to consider uh, the you know as we've been talking over the years about the library and where what the future of the library is and what technology is doing and and how do we incorporate that into the library um, to our own library so that we can plan for a library of the future um, they have a part-time technology person that um, has done wonders for them um, but they keep quitting uh, because it's a part-time job so um, this this eight thousand dollars makes the the position a full-time position so um, I've added that I've included that in my budget um, the everything figured no that's just eight thousand in salary do you have off the top what that other amount would be? I, I, I can I, get okay. it I can, I can I get it. it it's all when we did New Hampshire retirement, that increase, that's part of that part of that increase. When you'll see there's another thing about health insurance savings that's also netted in there. Um, at the time we were doing it, it was just easier not to just the wages. The wages yep. to show you what the wage increase would oh, be. Very good. So uh, there are also 
um, in here two additional part-time employees, one in the tax collector town clerk office for a, a total wages of $13,000. Um, if you've been here um, on any day during the at the end of the beginning of the month, um, people are lined up out the door. So we're looking at a part-time position to try and fill in those times when uh, it's so very busy uh, so that people don't have to wait so long. And also um, a part-time secretarial position in, in the Code Enforcement Office of, of the Fire Department. Um, and that is because um, we see some retirements coming up and we need to um, get, uh, we have to get the um, secession planning in place and it would it would it really needs to be another part-time person in there. Uh, overtime you see a big increase in overtime um, and I wanted to break that out so it's overtime of six sixty thousand dollar increase and it shows you below what makes up that sixty thousand dollars five thousand dollars is a moderate increase for the fire department $32,000 for the police department. That is, um, it was presented to me to the, from the police, um, the police chief that um, he wanted to add three new people to have a team of um, individuals who could go and um, address particular issues that were <coughs> cropping up say there was a particular drug in town or there were there was vandalism going on or there were shoplifting or um, whatever there there seems to be there there are trends in, in um, different kinds of drugs and all that kind of thing and um, consequently um, people have patrol officers have to get off the street to go and and um, you know address those kinds of things in an in a overall fashion so rather than including three hundred thousand dollars in my budget for three new employees I um, I put in my budget thirty two thousand dollars in extra overtime for backfill for um, so that those officers might be able to um, go and and look at it from from an overall perspective and, and to address a particular area of crime. Um, Are we talking a task force or is it just? I don't know that you would call it. I, I'm, I'm going to let the chief talk to you about what he would actually call it, but I would say that it's like a, a task force. He, um, I did not put what he's, he's asked for in his budget, but I did increase the, um, the overtime to uh, to address those types of things I think um, there's there's in most communities there's things that go on that the general public is not aware of and if they're not addressed um, before they become a big problem um, from a from a global kind of sense then they can become a much much bigger problem so, not to put words in your mouth, Eileen, but are you inferring that the chief did ask for, for an increase in staffing? Yeah, he's asked for three people. He did ask for three people. Right. Okay. Thank you. And and as I've said to him, and I've said to everyone, I I haven't put in here what I removed from the budget. I I removed quite a bit of things from the budget. This isn't this isn't. Um, I don't give you the budget as proposed by the department heads and hand it over to you and let you do what you will with it. Um, what I do is I pare it down. I take their budget and I pare it down. Um, and so you'll see their budget. Um, they have I've told them very clearly that if they disagree with me um, to please bring forward whatever it is. So for instance the police department uh, feels that they need these three new officers they will come to you and they will make their case to you um, I have just not put them in mind but in lieu of that I added over extra overtime yes John. Eileen this overtime um, police details and things of that nature is that considered overtime or not it is overtime but it's it's a different it's a different thing it's paid, it's paid for by somebody else well I understand I'm just wondering if there's a net 
overtime? Is this net or is this? This net? is just general fund overtime. General fund increase in overtime. overtime. Right. It's the details are on a separate self-supporting fund, which are, you'll see when okay. we go through that. Thank you. Okay. The rest of these um, overtime <coughs> amounts are based on actuals. So um, the highway department, we've tried to average that out over, over um, a number of years to see what their, it's, it's mostly the snow, the, you know, the snow over time. Um, there's been a couple of spike years where it was very unusual and there were years when it was lower, but um, we really don't have enough in the budget. We keep having to transfer money out of other parts of the budget to, in order to uh, cover the, the highway um, overtime. So, yeah. Yes, but did, so you said it's actual, or is this the increase over? This is the increase. Okay. But what I'm All saying right. is. Because I thought you had said this, the next couple were different. Uh, the, these are different because, um, as I said, the police, I'm adding a service. Oh, okay. In the in, and um, in the highway and solid waste, I'm putting them up to where they what, what we spend because of the winters or because of transferring um, the trash to. So the five thousand five thousand in fire is an added service. No, it isn't. Just right. the police. That's that's okay. that's right. It's it's. Um, it reflects what in fact it you really need in the budget. It reflects what we need. Yeah. Right. So. I, I get that wrong. That part okay. goes with so the So the police department, though, is? Is an added yeah. service. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, the fire department is proposing to, um, which I think is a really good idea, because, um, as you know, we're going more toward um, medical calls. And um, they would like to um, send uh, one of the be better and best and brightest um, each year to uh, paramedic training and um, to backfill that position. The person would go to the paramedic, we would pay for their tuition to go to paramedic school. Um, they, they would go on their own time. We would pay to backfill their shift um, and any of the clinicals and, and that kind of thing would be on their own time. We also would require them to um, sign some kind of an agreement that they agree that if we pay, we provide this training for them, that they would stay with the town with, for a certain number of years, and if not, they need to reimburse um, a portion of the tuition. Um, I've also spoken to the chief and his staff about going and speaking to the hospitals about seeing if they could contribute contribute to um, in a form of a scholarship or some kind of a grant um, because the more trained our employees are the more um, you know the more valuable they are to the hospitals right. I, I don't know if I should ask my questions or wait till we actually encounter you can ask. this during the process you can ask. Um, how do they get their training currently when it comes to if they want to become a paramedic or are well, we now trying to hire more appropriate we're trying to hire quali paramedics qualified people yeah Already but we're having a trained. really hard time hiring paramedics everybody training. wants paramedics okay. so um, we're having a really hard time so we're trying to grow our own okay no okay very good uh, legal fees, I um, had decreased this by $20,000 for the past couple of years um, because uh, we were not in, in negotiations. And this upcoming year, I see, um, without getting into too much into detail with it, but um, the, the um, trend with other municipalities are that um, they are doing some very um, innovative kind of things with health insurance and HSAs and health reimbursement accounts versus higher deductibles and that kind of thing um, and you know um, trying to offset that with wages and that kind of thing so it's I see it being, I see the, the um, 
the union contracts being more complicated in terms of um, what we you know what we might be um, looking at and so I've increased the legal fees for um, to by twenty twenty five thousand dollars and then um, there's the most aggressive bridge program in the state um, CR capital reserve funding is increased by nearly five hundred thousand dollars So I just showed to you the, some of the increases that we're proposing. This is some of the things that came in um, at, at what we would refer to as savings. So there's, there's things that increase and there's things that decrease. Um, health insurance came in at 3.5% um, of an increase. Uh, this is where your... Um, <laughs> the the changing of the health insurance is showing in the budget this will be the first year where everybody except one particular union um, will um, will be changing their health insurance and you're seeing so so there's cost avoidance and then there's um, and then there's savings as well so the actual savings um, would be in in the five hundred thousand dollar range because the health insurance is increasing by three point five percent. So if the health insurance wasn't increasing by five percent, your the difference between one year to the next would be closer to five hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, um, your the negotiations uh, for health insurance is actually showing up in a big way in this budget. Um, workers comp uh, looking at uh, no increase uh, gasoline and diesel pricing are lower than um, last year ten thousand um, dollars there are no raises in the budget except for step increases for union contracts as you know um, miscellaneous wage adjustments do it during due to staffing turnover and net of steps and what that means is that um, we took there, there have been several retirements. So as a person retires, they're replaced by somebody that is paid less. And um, there's been a lot of that. So there's been savings, and then there's been this, then you have the steps. So you take this, the, the big savings in, um, in the changeover in staff, and then add, add the steps together, and it's still a net negative $33,000. And then $6,500 basically balances out the, the number. There's 5,000 here and 2,000 there and 1,000 there and that kind of thing. So that balances out the number to a total of $80,500. All of those things together, if you add and subtract all those numbers, the, the first few pages were um, increases. This page is decreases and if you net the two, um, all those things out, it comes to an increase of eighty thousand five hundred dollars. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, so um, this is our format for um, that has been, I think, successful and and easier to look at um, than have has been in the past. Um, what I try to do is I try and take the total expenditures and take out those unusual things um, like capital reserve fund deposits and other capital and road infrastructure and capital uh, reserve fund expenditures um, out of the mix and we so we look at operating budget versus operating budget then we look at capital reserve deposits versus capital reserve deposits and so on um, and the reason why that's so important particularly in the highway department it could change by several million dollars in one year if if the capital reserve fund expenditures happen to be really large that year so it's it's just an easier way in my opinion of of doing it so um, the total general fund budget um, is proposed at twenty six thousand seven hundred and fifty three Twenty-six million seven hundred fifty-three thousand seventy-three dollars. 
um, capital reserve fund deposits $1,560,000, which we just talked about um, in the capital, capital uh, CIP discussion. Other capital, um, you'll see the detail of that coming up. Road infrastructure, that's, um, we again talked about that with the $675,000 in the budget and the $125,000 for um, the um, fee for the motor vehicle. Capital reserve fund expenditures, again, we talked about that earlier, to come to a net of operating expenses of $21,301,739. So then we take that number, 21,301,739 dollars, and compare it to last year's operating budget. And that's where that 80,539 dollars comes in. And that, that was all those things, the ins and outs that I just explained to you um, are reflected in these operating expenses. Um, most of them are de decreases, most of the, and most of the decreases relate to um, health insurance decreases. Uh, so then we come down to capital reserve fund deposits. Um, the deposits in 2014-15 were a million seventy-seven thousand dollars, and we're project we're proposing to um, put $1,560,000 into the uh, capital reserve funds for an increase of $483,000. And again, that's primarily the, um, the $200,000 that you see in communications equipment for the police department um, uh, communication system and an additional $200,000 in, in roads and bridges infrastructure to meet our um, needs for matching the 20% on the, the um, bridge projects. There's also a sum of money. Um, last year, the townspeople established a, a new capital reserve fund for geographic information systems, and we placed uh, $10,000 in there with the understanding that the following two years there would be a, an additional $65,000 placed in there. Um, so this is the, the first allotment of $65,000. Um, other capital, there are um, general parks and recreation expenses for upkeep of, of the um, buildings and that kind of thing. Highway is a roof. A roof and a mower. And a mower. The police vehicles, that's three vehicles. <coughs> um, what, what roof? The but highway there, garage there's roof. There's leakage going on up on their roof that needs to, needs to be looked at, yep. taken care of. Um, some new um, rifles and side, side, arms, side arms for the police equipment, for the police department. Um, building repairs for the library and um, building and grounds repairs that we put into the budget every year for um, the town buildings. So that shows an increase of $22,000 from the year before. Road infrastructure is, is the <coughs> same, $800,000. Capital reserve fund expenditures have decreased um, and that is, that doesn't affect the budget because the exact amount of money comes in. So you, when, when you deposit money into a capital reserve fund, it comes out of that year's tax rate. If you, if you take money out, you're taking money out of money that you already have. So you'll see the exact amount of money of capital reserve fund expenditures coming in and going out. Next. General fund. General fund totals. Um, because, of the, because of that difference in capital reserve funds, general fund totals is a savings of $214,000, Bob, versus appropriation versus appropriation. So if, if we can just go back to the first slide again. Um, no. Yes. So um, 
so what you see is go back to the operating first so what you, so what makes up the the increases in the budget are operating funds eighty thousand dollars increase um, capital reserve fund deposits four hundred and eighty three thousand dollar increase other capital an increase of twenty two thousand dollars and a decrease in capital reserve fund expenditures of six seven hundred and ninety so all those things together come to a negative two hundred fourteen thousand dollars here's the capital reserve funds we talked about that earlier um, what are the balances in the capital reserve funds um, if you look at the middle uh, the third column in it shows you the balance that is projected to be um, in in the capital reserve funds of as of 7 1 2015 which is the beginning of next fiscal year um, you can see the balances that are in each of those funds three hundred sixty five thousand dollars in the ambulance fund um, etc for uh, there's hundred seventy three thousand dollars in there for um, athletic fields and communications equipment and um, DW highway is three hundred fifty seven thousand dollars which gives us the ability to to finish that up we've been saving fifty thousand dollars a year and and there's a, a the the money is in there um, it, it's only supposed to be spent on DW highway mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Uh, so the total uh, so the total balance in the um, capital reserve funds is 2.4 million dollars and as you can see um, I was talking about a little bit earlier that we're um, we're proposing to put in 1.5 million dollars in and take 1.5 million dollars out um, in the past uh, as that's obviously not an ideal thing that you want to be doing um, but we're we're still trying to play catch up from before so in in years when they only put three hundred thousand dollars into the into the capital reserve funds they were still paying 1.5 million dollars out so um, we're um, we're trying to catch up um, to answer your question earlier Four hundred and seventy one thousand dollars after the one eighty five will come out. That will be the sewer fund balance in that capital reserve fund. On the bottom, sewer infrastructure improvements. Four hundred and seventy one thousand five hundred and ten dollars would be the balance after the one hundred and eighty five thousand. Under the red line, the, the second row of numbers up there. It starts with with um, a balance of five hundred and eighty one thousand five hundred and ten dollars. We're putting seventy five thousand in, taking out one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars, and the the balance in that sewer and infrastructure improvements account will be four hundred and seventy one thousand five hundred and ten dollars. And that's seventy five thousand. Seventy five thousand going in is coming from user fees. Correct. That's right. Yes. Correct. So do we? I'll see it later. I presume in the capital improvement plan they have ex expectations to expend the rest of that over the next six to ten years. Or? They're expending a lot of it, yes. Okay, uh, here's just a little bit more. Yeah. I know we're not supposed to get into philosophy. But oh, <laughs> never stopped in. <laughs> you want me to stop? I'll stop. No, please. No, go ahead. It, it, it occurs to me that, as you say, I'm going to spend a million five this year and probably next year, so I'm going to put a million five in. And I'm sitting here as police chief, or I'm sitting here as a DPW director or whatever, and I know you're going to buy me a brand new fire truck or so many cruisers for the police or, or a dump truck or two, because that's what we do. And some of these funds 
I think, I mean, going along with Danny's idea, not so much borrowing, but I think some of these funds could be lumped into a competition where maybe even before you have to adjust the budget before the department heads come and try to beat us up. <laughs> it, instead of knowing that, you know, there's money for two brand new dump trucks, da 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 if they have to compete for it, maybe they don't compete for it that aggressively every year. Mm -hmm. And that's just philosophy. But it occurs to me that some of these funds, yeah, we've named them, and God love it, you know, transparency, I guess, is one of the new words that I've been trying to figure out what it means based on the shenanigans that I see some other people doing. But South of the border. If we're going to, it's the feds. If we're going to South of the border. make that kind of effort, and I'm not suggesting we don't, I'm just suggesting that maybe the effort be made in a different from a different philosophical base, like international six-wheel dump truck, da 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 da, cost you 432,000. I don't know what it costs, mm -hmm. but it might not have to be that all of that truck at once, or that truck, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's still money there. I'm not suggesting taking it away, but maybe you accomplish some savings that you continue to put away mm -hmm. with a little more competition. Just a thought. Do you mean kind of prioritizing? Prioritize because maybe the, there's an, the ambulance is needed, there's a greater need for the ambulance that year than the dump truck. Could be. Is that what you Very mean? much could be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, Thank um, you. yeah, I like the idea of that, um, especially having to do with the equipment. Um, okay. Yeah, because, um, because like you said, if you know that you're going to buy two dump trucks every year or one dump truck and one loader every year or whatever it is, then um, you might not need to do so much convincing um, to, to do it. But that, I think maybe that's a conversation that should happen because I've, in the past we've occasionally put things off. Uh, we did it with cruisers relatively yeah. recently. And Last so those year we things did. happen. I, I mean, the whole CIP thing is so that we can try and okay. look out and keep things, you know, on an even keel, if you will. And it makes it easier. There's, people still hate giving you the check for the tax bill, but at least they can kind of count on where they're going to be. Um, and so that's a difficulty. I think putting off cruisers occasionally isn't a bad idea. Um, I, they have 100,000 miles, about 50,000 miles a year, and, and it's been the habit of transferring those down to another department or whatever but I didn't even have the courage of conviction courage of conviction to even start saying you know which which <laughs> might be I just I'm thinking of examples that, was, that we've used you, in the past you, you went after the cruisers before I did I was talking about a lump sum well one of Let's one of the um, basic well one of the things that right. um, that happens as you know is that um, these capital reserve fund expenditures receive as much scrutiny as the operating budget. So when the police chief comes up and asks for three cruisers, you wreck him over the coals for why he needs three new cruisers. And you do the same thing with the public works director, and he tells you what truck it is he's replacing and that kind of thing. So it's not, it's not as, um, it's not as, a given as you might think. Understood, and thank you. But those are legitimate questions to ask when they come before right. us. Absolutely right. they are. And they should have those answers. Yeah. Okay, so um, so there, that's your balances. So this is um, the Capital Reserve Fund ex um, expenditures or purchases in detail. Um, computer equipment, uh, thirty thousand dollars, thirty-five thousand dollars. What is that column with the two dollars? Those are fire equipment. CR, the fi it would be the fire equipment capital reserve fund, cardiac defibrillators, and the SCBA adding up to one hundred and twelve thousand dollars. Huh? You see, one hundred <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> fire, equi things. fire equipment, fire equipment, one hundred and twelve thousand three three four. Yeah. 
They combine the they two. They combine the two. That's what. Oh, that's, okay. that's how you. All right, all right. The all detail right. behind I it. I got it. Okay. It's just doing it in a different way. Right. But anyway, so um, thirty-five thousand dollars for computer um, licenses and server upgrades. Um, Thirty thousand dollars for a car cardiac defibrillator and monitor and transmitter to be placed on one of the ambulances for thirty thousand dollars. SCBA breathing apparatus for eighty-two thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars, um, and the total of those two numbers, thirty thousand and eighty-two thousand, is one hundred and twelve thousand three thirty-four to come out of the fire department equipment capital reserve fund. Um, and that is the eighty-two thousand dollars. Is if we do not get the grant. Um, when, are we, when are we going to know that? Do we have a timeline? We, um, we, Assistant Chief Borneman, is. Uh, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's just finishing up the grant to submit. Uh, grant deadline is in a week or so, so he's finishing that up to submit, and then we'll know at the beginning of the year. It might be after the budget process that we find out what that's. Did you guys have a question? Go just ahead. for something for Dan. later, but I know that that thirty thousand number just bugs me on uh, a Cadillac uh, uh, cardiac. Uh, it might as well be a Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, Freudian slip, right? Um, I know offices are buying them for like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred dollars now. But this is a I'm, whole I'm transmitter. I'm sure it's got something different. You know, it's a right? transmitter thing too. A transmitter? Yeah, yes. because you Hospital they're they're getting the transmission. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. get it. I thought the, the age of technology, everything, you know, the hospitals yeah. are fact, getting TV it live. Six grand is now, it. you know, eight hundred dollars. What's and this was a lot more money. Thirty thousand. Yeah, this is the monitor, the and the, the, the paddles. The, this is the whole kit and caboodle, all there with the transmitter and. But again, it's the, the leads on it. But again, yeah, if you're a paramedic and you're already trained, you know, I, 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 you're transmitting and, and getting feedback from a hospital or something. But the guy, is, saying, the guy in the truck but, is already. No. Practically a doctor nowadays. I mean, geez, and you know, then the doctors are saving the lives rooms, right, right in the truck. Doctors in the emergency room goes, "You have VTAC, give them this much medication en route." That's what I, they use. That's what it's and for. And they save people. And right. but, I mean, this um, this community has gone from putting out fires to taking people to hospitals. We're, we're right. we are a first responder community first and foremost. And they're doing it already. And that's correct. So, so, but they're doing without this piece of equipment. But this is good. This more is people. they're going to save more people as a consequence. They do. They do. They have well, this maybe not. Or this maybe is not every ambulance would have to find that out. Yeah, I don't no, think that would be a question for the chief. Might and again, aren't the hospitals ambulance. helping to fund some of these things? That's a good point. We, it was a, uh, probably four years ago. We had a doctor who lives in our town who's a cardiac Manchester. emergency Seems guy. Like. I can't remember his name or his exact title, but he came just bringing praises of our guy, uh, of our staff of the fire department right and I, I I didn't have a cardiac thing going on with my daughter but I rode in the back of an ambulance and watched your son do all that magic and when she got to the hospital they already knew everything so I hope we didn't get a bill for that part of the job because <laughs> the work was already done and that's I, that is I believe what this is all about and and I you're right I don't know if it's a new one Replace, yeah. I don't know yeah, I want to go for the record. I'm not against the, the equipment the money, in, in the ambulance and it's needed, but, but when you see it in the budget there and it's $30,000 right. a piece, it's just Unbelievable. trying to question why. Well, well, but I also really like what Tom said. I, I think it's to the benefit of the hospitals to, you know, it's, yes. off, it's a benefit to the citizens, obviously, to, um, you know, receive services like that, but it's also a benefit to the hospital to receive a patient who's already um, prepped and stable for um, to be taken care of at the hospital. So it would be a good thing to go to the hospitals and talk to them about um, contributing. It just, and I think it, we did get one. And I think this is the third one for the third ambulance. Well, did, didn't didn't they apply for a grant with Catholic Medical Center? Catholic Medical Center did give us one. Right. We bought one with the ambulance that we bought a couple of years ago, and I think this is the third one for that the third ambulance to, to have all three ambulances with it on. But the fire chief and his two assistants will be more apt to tell you what exactly. It's is just on frustrating to know of, of real time technology, even on the, what these smartphones are doing, and what the technology from data and that's being transmitted that doesn't cost a lot, and yet you just feel like because you're a city or a town in a municipality budget. It goes from, you, you know, to normal to outrageous. 
until somebody's able to come up with the cardiac yeah. app for an iPhone, this is what we have to deal with. A little bit more no, no, a smartphone. but I know the defibrillator, like I said, the suitcase model that office people have as backups are 1500 bucks. Well, so then, but now you're adding the, the transmitting, boats. and that so it jumps $28,000 yeah, for transmitting the data. They can have those volts. I'm, I'm I, think, I think they'll. Okay. No, you you don't have to be done because it's get you'll you'll be able to go through it in great detail with the with the fire chief. I'm sure. On the 19th. Put that put that question down so you can remember it. He'll remember. I'm sure you will anyway. But who would think a monitor for the for the police station costs that much? I mean, all of it. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyway. we, we've already been through most of these when we the talked bridges, about the Capital yeah. Reserve, um, oh, sure. the CIP report, um, Bean, Road, we, Bean Road Bridge replacement, that's $320,000 is our 20% match, drainage improvements of $100,000, I g gave you the list of those. So those two things come to $420,000 to come out of the roadway inf road infrastructure account. Um, capital Reserve Fund, uh, DW Highway, $400,000, as I said, um, from uh, Chamberlain Bridge to actually not to Bedford Road. It's to uh, Reed's Ferry. Reed's Ferry Lumber. Um, in Highway, a six-wheel dump truck, a front-end loader for a total of $305,000, solid waste, a steak body truck for thirty thousand dollars <laughs> and sewer infrastructure of a uh, pickup with a plow um, some sewer line repair and a bobcat tool cat for x cross country, cross -country. sewer maintenance I, is that a toot cat or a tool cat tool cat okay toot cat a basket in the back it's, it's a little french little French thing going there so, um, so all those things together come to a decrease of two hundred and fourteen thousand um, dollars but again it's it's um, the two hundred fourteen thousand dollars that you see right there is um, isn't really isn't really the the number that you should look at it um, because because the capital reserve fund is seven hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars more so what what's really happening as far as the tax rate is concerned is eighty thousand dollar increase in um, in operating expenses <coughs> no go back Go back, go back. Okay, all right. So eighty thousand dollars in operating expenses. Move to the next one. Um, Four hundred eighty-three thousand dollars in um, in capital reserve fund ex deposits. These are the things that affect the tax rate directly. Um, an increase of twenty-two thousand dollars in other capital um, expenditures. The seven hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars is um, is actually coming in at the the exact same amount. So um, you would take those three two those three numbers together. Can you add them for me? Eighty thousand, four eighty three, and twenty two thousand. That those are the expenditures that are, will affect the the, the uh, tax rate. What does it come to? 585. 585. That's going to affect the tax rate. I thought the 80,000 was going to be 80, the amount that was relates, left over. 80,000 relates to the operating expenses. $483,000 in additional capital reserve fund deposits. That's your so, recommendation. Right. Right. Exactly. So um, that will affect the tax rate if you, if you agree with me. Um, $22,000 will affect the tax rate. 
the $799,000 will not affect this year's tax rate because it's money coming out of a capital, capital reserve reserves. fund that already has been saved. Right. So if you add those three things together, it comes to 585, and that is the increase, the projected or the proposed increase in expenditures that affect the tax rate. Now, but you had you had increases in revenues you were talking about earlier, right? That right. come off of that number. That's correct. So about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in um, three hundred fifty thousand dollars total. Yeah, about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in increased um, revenue, and um, it's very confusing. Yeah, you got about out of the 585, you got $350,000, which we increase revenue. Insurance rebate is additional 240. General fund non tax revenue was 118,000. Road yeah, infrastructure was a decrease of 10. Right <laughs> so it's $350,000. So you take the 585 minus the 350. And it comes up to okay. the so, slide here. So here we are. Um, we should we should probably have had another column here, um, which we've never had. What? Um, so you have, you show the the general fund operating expenses of twenty one two twenty one, the proposed of twenty one three oh one. That the difference between those two numbers is eighty one thousand dollars. The difference between the capital reserve fund deposits are four hundred eighty one eighty three thousand dollars. The difference between the other capital reserve expenditures are twenty two thousand dollars. Road resurfacing is the same. Um, capital in the in the ones in color, the green and the and the like um, aqua blue are money that goes in and out. So um, right. So, and then you look at your revenues and you see um, an increase of approximately um, $350,000. So, um, so you have 580, the things that affect the tax rate are about $585,000 worth of expenditures minus $350,000 in additional revenues. Which comes to two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars, give or take. Right, and two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars comes to about eight cents on the tax rate. So, um, what we so what we do is we take the appropriations, we subtract the revenues from other sources, we add back in overlay for abatements. Um, we add back in the veterans credits because um, if someone isn't paying them somebody else then then it needs to um, get spread amongst the other taxpayers um, so the amount to be raised by taxes is um, six, proposed to be 16 16 million three hundred twenty six thousand we have not increased the value of the town last year um, Last year we showed Atrium Medical at seven point five million dollar a seven point five million dollar increase. It actually came in quite a bit higher than that. So that the projected tax rate um, was mm -hmm. it was supposed to be twenty cents yeah. of an increase for the town, and it ended up being seventeen cent increase for the town. Um, this year's proposed tax rate is is. Um, an increase a proposed increase of eight cents on the tax rate. So what does that last number mean? The five fifty seven estimated tax rate at town council update. When I came before you a month ago, yeah. We were projecting an eleven cent increase. Oh. And the rate would have been five fifty seven. Eileen, through the budget process, through what the towns what the, the departments have offered, we're projecting an eight cent increase. So you're down it's three cents. Three cents. Three cents right now. That's the right direction. Thank you. It's actually quite a bit less than 
than what they have asked for. I'm sure it is. <laughs> And it may change still, but. What's that? <coughs> you have the bad, good cop, bad cop, you have the bad cop. Big or bad type. Well, I do the first round of bad cop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with a second round. You guys get the second round. So these are some things that we have to be mindful of, um, primarily the um, state revenues. We have no idea what's going to happen with the biennium. We still have two targets left of um, pockets of money that come from the state. One would be the rooms and meals taxes. The other one would be the highway block grant. Over the years, the past couple of biennial budgets, they've talked about cutting rooms and meals. They've talked about cutting the highway block grant. Um, We've put them in at um, at what they have been actually what they're projecting them to be, but during the during the budget um, deliver their budget deliberations, they can do all kinds of things, and these are the only things that are hanging out there that are left that they could take from us. Um, and there's one more union contract. Hey, we're all working to be independent, self-funded. Self so this is something that you, you know, we try to show you every year. Um, I think it's really important for, for the taxpayers to understand that this council here has only control over the municipal part of the budget. So um, the, you can see the gray part in there. Uh, the blue part is, is the school department, which um, the taxpayers vote on separately. Um, the municipal part never come the the school part never comes through the council. It's done separately. The council is is that <coughs> is the council's part that they they review is the gray part, um, and the county is the is the balance, the orangey color up at the top. So if you had a if you had a home valued at three hundred thousand dollars. Your tax bill um, in 2014. Yes, the one you just got. The one, the yeah, based on the tax rate right now, uh, a home valued at three hundred thousand dollars would have had a bill of seven thousand one hundred and seventy-three dollars. Of that seven hundred and seventy-three, seven thousand one hundred and seventy-three dollars, five thousand two hundred and thirty-two dollars would go to the school. $354 would go to the county, and $1,587 would go to the municipality. And I just, I think it's really important to stress this, um, that when we talk about the municipality, this $1,587 for this $300,000 home, we're talking about everything that you think of in the town, the police, the fire, the ambulance, the street lights, the trash disposal, um, the snow plowing, the um, you know the this this building, um, parks and recreation, the library, all of those things together represent 22 percent of what a person would pay on their bill. Uh, and I'm I'm not naming everything. There's there's a, other things too. Yeah. A whole host of different things that are included in there, but it's it's surprising um, that 22 percent of the budget you 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 can get what all what you of, show for it. Right, what you show for it. Right. Yeah. And, and I guess to be completely open about it, that we we get. How much from other revenues? Eight million or, or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, your, this is net. Oh. This is the net. Right. So, how much of a percentage of our budget is coming from other sources than taxes? Um, or are you saying you that say eight eight this million? includes those other revenues? That includes what the other revenues. Yeah. The so twenty-two percent. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's just the we final. get about our okay. budget is about thirty million. Um, about eight million comes from other sources, and this the twenty two percent includes the other revenues. The twenty two percent represents the thirty million. The net. The so net. The, this the amount. To, this is the amount to be raised by taxes. So right. it's just so the property it's thirty taxes. million dollars minus eight million dollars equals this amount of money, and right. the same with the school. 
that the we school have to raise. gets money from other sources. They have a budget. They get money from other sources. This is their net amount to be raised by taxes. Same okay. with the county. Right. That that twenty two percent there is the sixteen million three hundred and twenty six. Right. right. It's just the it's property tax. The it's just the, the only to be raised by taxes on. sixteen million. So in this case, our budget was thirty one million. Almost half of it was raised by other funding sources and the right. re remaining was the taxes. And I suspect that on, on the town side, a greater percentage of our budget, budget is offset by other revenues um, compared to the school. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a plus, which is why two thirds of the, of the total budget, I think, I'm throwing out a percentage that I don't know exactly what it is, but I suspect two thirds is theirs, a third is ours roughly. And, um, but in here, it shows the percent and because it's a property tax. Right. Hmm? Can, can you leave that up there? Right here? Yeah. Go ahead. Go right ahead, Dan. I, I just wanted to point out, because I, I, I like the math in this kind of a situation, where you see uh, if your house is valued at 300000 you're roughly paying a little over 7000 a year. Um, when you break it down between school and municipality, um, $132 a month for the municipal side of our government, what we're responsible for, you get cop, fire, you have a heart attack in your driveway, the ambulance is there in, in less than five minutes, you have parks, you have uh, plowed, plowed roads, you trash have a library. Disposal. Um, trash disposal. Uh, trash disposal. Well, you have street a, lights. Street lights. <laughs> well, road I, repair. Road repair, repair, all that. I mean, when you name, when you name all that, I, I just wanted to point out that, uh, and not to, not to bash or insin even insinuating that the school is overpriced or anything. I'm just saying that this is what it is. If you break down your your average six hundred dollars a month for your prop for your taxes for the home that you live in, one hundred and thirty two dollars a month of that six hundred dollars a month is everything we just mentioned. So, and I wanted to say thank you for the hard work. Uh, mm -hmm. It's nice to have a budget presented to us um, with all its complexities. And, uh, and you bring us a budget that's eight cents higher than it was uh, last year, and that gives us a good format to, to and a jumping off point to talk over the next couple months. So thanks uh, for the both of you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Bill? Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Regarding the pending budget items, any insight? As it relates to rooms and meals or the highway block grant, None. nothing. I guess nothing. the question would be: Is when do you expect to have insight on that? Uh, June. Well, having well, okay. the governor will present her budget, um, believe by the yeah, second week of February, too. and then um, we'll get some feedback from both the House and the Senate to see what their plans are going forward. Uh, there's a lot of things that that occurred, but we won't know the final numbers until June. You will 30th. never know until June because the governor's budget could come out, and it could, like um, a, f a few, probably four years ago, it was proposed that um, rooms. That, but there was something called shared revenues that was going away. The part of the rooms and meals was going away, um, and. The shared revenues ended up going away, but the rooms and meals taxes were reinstated. Um, there was talk about um, the 100% of the, you, you know, there, were, there, were, there was a whole shell game going on. And, and I don't mean that in, in a necessarily in a, the but way that the, it's coming the out. Until the dust settles, you don't know. The, right, you have no idea. The, the yeah. governor can, can do whatever she wants. The legislature can say whatever they want, but when they, it, the, the rubber meets the road when they vote, not when they talk. I wasn't going to go on that one. Okay, so, we're all, thank you. all set. So tonight, you. you'll be getting a USB drive, like always, with the budget, the Excel worksheets, fully interactive. If you want to take a number out, just replace the column, put in the column, they'll calculate your new tax rate. I don't so everybody will get one of those USBs tonight. Yeah, I know. I was under the impression though that if a counselor wanted to get a written book, uh, one would be one? one would be prepared. No, I believe that was what. No, was 
No, we're in the books. We can vote on I, 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 oh, no, I'm just wondering. I, I thought that was an agreement. We have a book for I thought it was you, an I already have your book. A gentleman's agreement were, was made last year, I believe. Yes. I have a couple of books ready couple for people because I know I know certain people want the books. I only had one book. He said, that's why I said, I need a word. I said, I need one, too. Okay, all set. Why don't we uh, take a look at the minutes? Oh, wait a minute. Before that, yeah, minutes. I thought I was going out of order. <coughs> of November 6, 2014. Move approval as presented. Motion by Bill Boyd. Any second? Second. Second by Tom Koenig. No, no, no. That was 10 seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. It sounded like you. It sounded like you. Sorry. Dan Dwyer. Any amendments, changes? No, I looked at it too. I didn't see any. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Six, zero. One eight. abstention, please, ma'am. Oh, one abstention, two of course. Abstentions. Okay, four. <laughs> You're doing a mathematical. I haven't, I haven't four, read two, <coughs> zero. Because there's only six four, zero, of us. Two. Sorry. Uh, zero, two. Nope, I appreciate it. Two abstentions? 402, two abstentions. Thank you. Tom, do you need those? And the abstentions are Lon Woods and Tom Koenig. Okay. Comments from the press. Hold yourselves back. Comments from the public. Comments from the council. Mr. Boyd. Chairman Harrington, Councilor Koenig. Happy birthday. Uh, and they both have the same birthdays same according birthday. to Facebook. So. That's why we're both so pleasant. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Uh, anyone else? And I also want to thank just everybody that with Thanksgiving, you know, great job across the board. Thank you very much for for all the public public servants that were out there keeping everything safe for the community. It was uh, it was noted, especially Thanksgiving when I was headed down south to visit my dad. Very impressed with the roads. The roads alone, I would just was was blown away by that. A lot of hard work. Thank you. Okay, I just have one. I may, maybe should have made an announcement, but uh, the American flag at the James O'Leary Community Center is being replaced. It's old. They were trying to decide whether they want to clean it or whatever. Well, Senator Aya, Senator Ayotte is going to replace it with one that was flown over the Capitol. So they've made arrangements. She's going to be coming on January 5th. We're going to have a little ceremony. There will be invitations sent out. They just don't know the time yet. So I just want to be able to let everyone know that they'll be receiving it. They'll be making an announcement about that. And I had done as well. Thank you to Public Works, Police, and Fire. It was a job well done. Anyone else? I will entertain a motion to. So moved. <laughs> to motion by Bill Boyd, seconded by. Second. Are you sure it was you? To Tom Koenig. Yeah. <laughs> to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Six, Six zero zero. zero. Good night. <laughs>